Hey guys, it's Jake. I thought that it would be an awesome opportunity right now to share with you my quarantine daily devotional routine. That's a bit of a tongue twister. It took me a couple tries to get that right. Right now I'm reading through Hebrews, and if you guys stay tuned, then I'll actually share with you what I learned about today. Normally I wake up at about 7 a.m. Even during the quarantine, I'm trying to stay on that schedule so that I can just stay productive throughout the day. It helps me. I'm definitely more of a morning person than a, than a uh, nighttime person. First thing that I'll do always is grab a plate of breakfast. It's so much easier to learn and focus on God's word when my stomach isn't growling the entire time. Then I'll take the opportunity while Kate is still sleeping to get comfy on the couch, grab God's word, and spend some time in it. Usually I'll read about two chapters. That's kind of my goal during quarantine is to be reading two chapters during my uh, morning devotionals. Right now you'll see me taking notes. That's not something that I normally actually do for devotionals. Um, I think that for me, I prefer to just have it as one-on-one -on -one time with me with God. And there's been seasons where I've taken notes, um, but I'm actually doing that today so that I can spend some time sharing it. After reading through two chapters, I will spend some time in prayer. There's not really a set amount of time that I'm going to spend in prayer. It just depends on, you know, what I'm doing and uh, what God has laid on my heart that morning. But I could say for sure at least five minutes or so. And I think that overall my morning devotional ends up being around 30 minutes. Um, obviously, it's not like there's a set time on it or anything like that. But that's like the area that I'm shooting for is to spend 30 minutes in God's word. All right, well, I just finished my uh, morning devotional. I read through Hebrews 9 and 10. I'll just share some things that I learned. I've been reading through Second Thessalonians with the youth group that I teach, and I think it's so amazing when, you know, Scripture uh, connects really clearly with other Scripture. And in this, you know, they talk about the description of the Holy of Holies, which is the inner sanctuary where the presence of God would dwell and only the high priest was allowed there once a year. But that was a human's way to be in the presence of God. And then we see in verse 11 and confirmed again in verse 19, Christ tore the veil that separates the common area from the Holy of Holies, from where the presence of God is. This isn't just figuratively, he literally, through his death, one of the miracles that happened was that the veil in the temple was torn and symbolically what that reference was that now because through my death all are welcome to be in the presence of God and it actually went so far as the Holy Spirit began to dwell within believers which is now we know that the Holy Spirit dwells within all believers but that just shows that God you know God went from being in this secluded temple and I'm not I'm not trying to say the presence of God only existed in the Holy of Holies that's not how that works it was the the way which the Israelites would be able to make a sacrifice in the presence of God for their sins and of course their sacrifices were only even valid for the sins that they didn't intentionally commit just shows you how inefficient blood sacrifices were of the Old Testament and they were never meant to be efficient and it talks about this in scripture here and not necessarily learn brand new but something that I'm just picking up as I'm reading it is uh, no blood equals no forgiveness God's word makes that very clear and the reason that that's important is because often I think as a new believer it's easy to question well why did Jesus have to die why does there need to be blood for forgiveness and there is explanation for that in scripture you know at the end of the day point blank is that as a believer you're never going to be able to understand scripture if you're not willing to believe what scripture tells you about scripture you know um, scripture is the final authority about itself yearly sacrifices can never atone for eternal sin and then it goes on to say that they are a reminder that's my translation of it but it's just amazing to think that you know in the old testament law it was set up that the israelites ought to make yearly sacrifices that weren't even going to be sufficient for their eternal sins but were instead a proof of their faith verse 17 god forgets our sins now of course we know god doesn't forget that wouldn't make sense uh, we don't have a forgetful god but instead it says this is god says i will remember their sins and lawless deeds no more so i think that it's important to recognize it doesn't say i will forget their sins but remember their sins no more and in, sen in the sense of like i will no longer hold their sins against them i will no longer make them pay for those sins because christ has paid for them now that we've received this eternal forgiveness what ought we do as believers and our job is to encourage one another in love and good works. It also is very particular about meeting together. Verse 25, it says, um, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more. And then the last thing that I think that I really picked up out of this 
is that confidence in Christ equals endurance in this world. That's what I learned today, guys. Um, I just want to say really quickly, guys, that you know, Kate and I, uh, we've been loving doing this channel. We're so thankful for 100 subscribers, and we're still growing, which is so cool to see um, how quickly that's growing. But ultimately, like our goal is not to lift up Jake and Kate. You know, that's obviously the platform that we have, but our goal is to lift up the name of God. Hit the red subscribe button. You can hit the notification bell right next to that and you'll get notified on your phone every time we upload a video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I hope that you learned something. Comment down below, you know, what you've been learning in your daily devotionals or what you learned from today. Um, and that's all. Bye, guys.